We're going to get to see Jimmy Butler go against LeBron James. Bam Adebayo versus Anthony Davis. Heat culture versus the second coming of Showtime. Pat Riley versus, well, everybody. <laughs> Riley's involvement here really is just fascinating. Here is a guy who is as responsible as anyone for inventing the 80s identity that the Lakers carry to this day. A decade ago in Miami, he then became the godfather of the super team, well, at least the modern version. And now he's riding a group that is all old school in both concept and construction. But wait, when it comes to the intrigue in this series, as the old infomercials used to say, there's more. There's the Lakers' vow to use these playoffs to honor Kobe Bryant and all the emotion and burden that comes with it. There's Andre Iguodala playing in his sixth straight NBA Finals. LeBron in his ninth in 10 years, which is just, I mean, that is insane, people. Over the weekend, I asked LeBron what he did during the NBA Finals last year, his lone year away in a decade. He said he was in a bunch of different places, including a vacation house in Cabo and, wait for it, a hookah lounge, of course. But he also said that he watched every minute and even started visualizing what he himself would have done on every possession. Well, he won't have to visualize anything this year, and neither will Butler, who imagined and predicted this moment and now gets to actually go live it. Here was Jimmy sitting down with me before this year's playoffs started. Keep in mind, we had this conversation right after the Heat had fallen to the number five seed with a projected second round date with reigning MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks looming. And yet Jimmy still said this. So how far can the Miami Heat go down here? We can win this. You think you can win the whole thing? Yes. Yes. You know you're not favored to. I don't give it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Speaking for myself, I don't give a damn what anybody says. And I, I think I can speak for my teammates when I say they don't give a damn either. Now, during last night's trophy ceremony, I checked in with Jimmy on that prediction. So you're still just that confident? Very much so. Uh, I think Coach Pat and uh, everybody else in the organization did a great job of putting this group together. Um, we've been together. We've been in each other's corner all year long. And it doesn't stop here. we got four more to go. And why not have that confidence after what the Heat have pulled off here in the bubble? For all the talk about how much talent the Boston Celtics have, it was Miami that went on a 35-17 to run to close out the Eastern Conference Finals, oh. setting off celebrations from South Beach to Little Havana. We got car parades of fans banging the pots and pans. Oh, it's so good. Good. Love that sound. We got heat jerseys flooding the streets. Dwayne Wade and DJ Khaled partying all over the internet. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and the party the heat themselves had at the hotel here in the bubble. Jimmy walked in wearing an Eric Spolstra University of Portland jersey, which is amazing, and a tribute well earned. Spilcher himself has a great story. Yes, you've seen the pictures. He started out as the Heat's video coordinator. But the real story with him now is just how elite a coach he has become. Take a look at where he ranks among some of the best coaches this league has ever seen. He is just a flat-out winner. Can he add to that in this year's finals, facing his own former field general in LeBron? For the next couple weeks, we will get to watch and see and experience the joy and exhilarations of high-stakes basketball at its finest, which this year, of all years, I am pretty grateful for indeed. All right, Richard, the rain has just just come behind it's awesome. us. It's awesome. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm into these I'm conditions. Like a, I'm like a field reporter now. Right? <laughs> it's good. Let's go. You're so many things. Yeah, so I would many like many. to know what your impressions are, though, of a Heat Lakers finals. I, I, I'm excited. You know, one, you know, in the media, there are storylines. There are opportunities to talk about Jimmy Butler and his, you know, really his journey from, you know, Chicago to Minnesota to Philly to now here as a leader of the team. Uh, obviously, Le LeBron James and, and what he's been able to accomplish has been well yes. documented. But you also have guys like Anthony Davis that are here for the first time. Uh, you have Dwight Howard and Rondo that are, have revitalized their career to help lead a team that hadn't been to the postseason in eight years in, in the Lakers. And so I'm excited about this. There's a lot to gain for both teams, and there's also a lot to lose for both teams. Yeah, you know, this is, this is a great series. I think 
It's the combination of when you talk about it, LeBron James obviously ascending to his rightful place in the league as, as the best player and the team he used to play for. And I, I can't think of anything better than watching his analytical mind, his high IQ, try to decipher and break down what the Heat do both defensively on, with the zone and then offensively with all the ball movement and body movement they, they have going. And Rachel, I got to tell you, even though I'm not sure you can hear me over there, I kind of knew this was going to happen. I can hear you now. It took I me kinda, a minute. I couldn't hear you at the top of the show, but now I, I kind of knew this was going to happen. I, you know, I, I, I had an idea way back when, back at the trade deadline, that the, the Miami Heat would be in the NBA Finals. And I actually have on my phone the emails for the hotel reservations that I made for the final. I made two different reservations. I made one in case the Heat didn't have home court, and then one, hey, maybe they do have home court. But as soon as they acquired Andre Iguodala and Jay Crowder, I had a, a premonition that this moment would happen. Welcome to Heat Island, everybody. Say this. I started the show talking about how 2020 owed us one. It is one of the great robberies of this mm. year. When we get to the more frivolous stuff, I'm obviously not talking about the more serious stuff, but on the frivolous side of things, the fact that Los Angeles and Miami are not hosting these oh, games. No. It's so sad. So sad. It's just so sad. Now, now we're here getting rained on in Orlando <laughs> instead of being You're in Miami. You're not the Wicked Witch of the West. You're I not going to melt. I'm fine. I needed this after those pickleball matches this morning. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.